Okay, so let's have a look at uh, zero knowledge proofs. And with this, we'll be using the Fiat Shamir heuristic. And to keep it up to date, we'll use elliptic curved cryptography. First, we'll show the interactive proof and then the non interactive proof. Overall, we'll be using the Go programming language as it's a very powerful uh, programming technique to implement uh, cryptography. Okay, so let's make a start and see if we can understand what is meant by zero knowledge proofs. Okay, so first uh, we have a uh, Bob. Okay, here's Bob. And over here we have Alice. So in the normal method, what happens is that uh, Bob sends over his password and Alice takes a hash of that password and stores it in her database. She might add a salt to that. So she'll take the password plus a random salt value and then create a hash value. The problem with this though is that now with Hashcat it's possible to go through lots of passwords and because the salt is stored alongside the hash value, a tool like Hashcat can actually determine the mapping between the hash signature and, and the password. Along with this, uh, Bob is giving away his password so that Alice can discover it. So either Eve could be listening or uh, Alice could actually find out something sensitive about uh, Bob. So we could also have things like his geolocation, his login ID, uh, his fingerprint, and, and so on. Each time, if he gives that away to Alice, then he's revealing something about his identity. So with a zero knowledge proof, what we do is that Bob will create a random uh, value, or he'll take his password and then convert it into something that Alice cannot determine what the original password was. So with that, he passes a value over, which Alice will store. Then uh, Alice will send a challenge to Bob. Bob does a calculation to create a proof and then sends it back. And Alice checks that Bob still knows his random, his original uh, value. This is called interactive because Alice sends a challenge to Bob and Bob produces the proof from it. In the non-interactive method, and we also call this a random oracle method too, what happens is that Bob will register his value again that relates to his secret, and we'll call this X, and this is his password. He'll convert his password into some value that Alice cannot determine the original uh, value. It then creates a random oracle, a random value, and then will create the proof from that that is sent to Alice. Alice is then able to look at the proof that was given and the value of a V here that's been created as a random value and prove that Bob still knows his password. This is called non-interactive zero knowledge proof. And we have a random oracle in here to make sure that each time uh, Bob produces a random value to be able to prove um, his the knowledge So the method that we'll use to be able to implement this is elliptic curve cryptography. So I'll give you a quick overview on what elliptic curve cryptography looks like. But basically what we have is an elliptic curve. It looks a bit like this, y squared is equal to x cubed plus uh, ax plus b. So one example of this is this curve uh, here. 
and then we make sure that we are working in a finite field so all of our operations become mod p so that's the remainder uh, after we do um, an integer division by p and p is a prime number so with elliptic curve what happens is that we take a point such as a base point and then we add g plus g to give us 2g and it's not possible to determine what the original value of g was even though we have uh, 2g so with elliptic curve we have a private key and for Alice that could be A so this is her private key and then the public key becomes this point here added A times this becomes the public key and it's equivalent to a multiplier so we multiply and find the value of A G the point this is a scalar value the point added a times or a times g this becomes the public key value and it's an x y point on the curve and we will always get a point on the curve no matter how many times that we add the points it will always be on the on the curve as long as the original base point is also on the curve so this is the the method that we use so we can add it's a basic operation of add we can also subtract points and so on so within the fiat uh, shamir heuristic what happens and if we're using the elliptic curve is that we'll start off with bob having his uh, secret Bob and Alice agree to two points in the elliptic curve, G and H, so that Bob creates X times G and X times H. Uh, Alice cannot determine the value of X. It is too difficult from a computation point of view to work out what the original value of X is. So he sends that over and Alice will save that for later. In the interactive form, Alice creates a random oracle, a random value. Then B, uh, Bob selects a random value, V, and then calculates R, which is V, minus X is secret, times uh, C. This is a point subtraction. This value here is a point on the elliptic curve, V is a point, and C is a scalar, is also a point, sorry. And we multiply this point by X, and then we do an elliptic curve subtraction, where we take the point V, subtract it from X, the scalar, times C to give us a point on the elliptic curve, R. Then, uh, Bob sends back R, sends back uh, V times G, and H times V. So it's not possible for Alice to know the value of V because it's hidden in these values here. When it's returned, she checks to see the, the, these values are equal to R times G plus C times XG, which she has. And if we do this, we can show the proof of it and end up with the correct value. And this is defined as interactive because Alice needs to send a challenge to Bob. So if we look here, this is the code that we'll use to implement it. Initially, what we do is that we take the a message 
and then we take the hash of the message and then we map that on to a scalar value and then we take a G and an H in this case we'll take two random points on the elliptic curve that Bob and Alice agree to we then calculate uh, X G and X H Alice then generates a random value and sends that to, to Bob okay so next what would happen is that uh, we'll generate a random value R and we'll multiply uh, the value that we have uh, V uh, multiplied uh, sorry we will take R here which is uh, V minus C X okay so there's the multiply and there's the subtract uh, in there on the other side this is where we check the results here so these are these uh, computations happening at this point and we check for uh, this proof so this is an interactive uh, version of it as Alice must send at uh, the value of C next we'll look at the interactive non-interactive version so with this again Bob sends over X G and X H selects a random uh, value and then takes the challenge as the hash of this this uh, V times G and H V times H merges them together and then creates the hash so the hash uh, is this value here uh, we multiply it by the uh, x value here and the v value to get r so over here uh, Alice has all these values once they're returned so she can now compute c and she'll do her check as she did before and this is the code here that we can do this so basically this is merging the values together into a single hash so it can take multiple uh, values uh, for x, g, x, h, v, g and, and v, h and then it will merge them and then it will create uh, a scalar value here for c so now let's look at uh, some code that implements this so we'll just try a different password here so what we should see is that uh, the uh, password is converted into an X value there and then I uh, will calculate our values here so the code that we've used is is the code that we saw before and we can see uh, here that this is how we create the interactive non-interactive proof okay so that's been an introduction into zero knowledge proof with the fiat shamir heuristic and using elliptic curve cryptography